use a um, clear tip because this milky white won't show up too white. But that natural tip it actually gives me that. This is just my beginning of my French. I'm gonna work slowly, brush it in. I'm gonna test this pink out, see if this pink is what I want. See how if this was a clear tip, that milky white actually would be a little bit more milky and then it will show through the actual tip. I'm gonna use just enough, blend it in, get my shaping, shape my work. That was just a perfect amount of powder. So I'm gonna test my pink out from Wave Gel. This is two, 213. It's a nice pink. And I'm gonna do my ombre. Let's do my blend first. It's like a pastel baby pink. You can't, can't really see it from the, but it's actually a very nice baby pink. Because it's pastel, it kind of blends into with the white a little bit, but it makes it easier for me to do my ombre. Now I'll do the cuticle area. Give it a little more time. Make sure I get my cuticles nice and flush. I'll do less work later. I actually really like this pink. It kind of it's like a milky white pink also, so it make, blends in. You guys can actually you can see it from my from my angle. I can't see, it, but you guys can see it. Usually you want a little bit more pinkier than this, but this is just enough. I feel like that's good. Okay. Um, when the taco hits, this is gonna bring it out. So I like that pink, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and do all my white in the same position I did every nail. For a lot of you guys that are practicing ombre, I recommend using more of a milky white to start off. It gives you the ability to blend a little bit easier. Uh, if you're using like a very, 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 very like extreme white, um, it actually is harder for you to blend because um, you know you have to really control it. So be careful with that. Um, get your practice down first before you use those extreme colors like black and reds and stuff like that. You really gotta, you know, get that motion down. So I like using softer colors for this ombre. It'll give it a nice soft, clean look. A harsher white will definitely show up more, but this white, perfect with this pink. I will shape my acrylic as I'm working because I don't have to do too much work later shaping. I use my brush to brush through the, the acrylic. I don't tap it and I don't drag it too much. Um, I don't use the tip of the brush either. I use the base, the flatness of the brush. This gives me the ability to get a nice even surface right here. And I'm gonna go through and do all the white like that first before I do the ombre. So I know where to position my ombre every time. So I would position my white in the same spot and each nail, ideally, ooh, I got a little bit of, oh, that's from the towel. Get that out of there. Lint from the towel. That allows me to know where to position my ombre. So all my fingers will have the same consistency of ombre on each finger. Brushing through, brush from always from the side in. Make sure it's nice and smooth. I do not want to put too much work later. If, right now is the time for you to smooth the nail out, get your shape, okay? John, how you want me to pay it? I'm going right now. You'll pay, I'll give you money back.
Always have control of your powder. My powder never runs. If it runs, I just hold it for a little bit longer. I don't like to work with powder that's too runny. It means I lack control. Just always enough. I keep my ratio the same. I really don't have any excess. I always break up the big enough beads for the nail. Keep my shape, maintain my shape. This set how much for long nails? It depends. You know, I charge usually a hundred. So that's my price. Maybe different for you guys. Depending on what your clients willing to pay, your location and you know, your skill level. That's important. There's some stuff in here. Is this my towel that dirty? No, it's not. It's from the powder, huh? Must have gotten some stuff in there. Ombre, you know, everybody, I always tell my students, anybody can ombre. The moment that you touch powder, you, you can, you blend powder, you're, you're ombre. But ombre precisely, as in like every finger has the same ombre, same spot, that's important. That will separate you from other people when it comes to ombre. This color reminds me of OPI's Let's Be Friends. Make sure that my blend is nice and smooth. This color was set off once we do the um, uh, top coat. You use like pastel colors like this, is when it's matted, they're kind of like, kind of similar. Once you put on that pastel, the, the top coat, it'll shine it out. take care of my cuticles you gotta flush these cuticles guys because later on you want to do that cuticle work you don't want to do too much work either there's too much powder there you're gonna drill more you're gonna risk taking too much out okay these two colors are definitely really good for anyone that's practicing ombre they blend really well Wave gel powder is very buttery. I'm going to blend it in really good. My monomer is dirty. My monomer jar is dirty. That's what it is. That was a powder. It wasn't. Flush the cuticle. Get the application nice and right. Hey, long time no see. Yeah, this baby pink is, I mean like, if you, like from my angle, cause it's the lighting is really like a white light. So I can't see the blend, but in my, where I'm looking at right now, the, the blend is really nice and the, the color really good combination. But I find your end is probably looks good too, because I think it's just where I'm looking at in the camera right now. But 
it's the brightness that makes it look like the two colors are blending together. Like I said, if you're practicing ombre, really important to use colors that are not too strong. Gives you the ability to do the blend a little bit easier so you can practice. I see a lot of nail techs. I think one of the biggest things I had, my biggest pet peeve was beginners jumping in and seeing like these black and white ombres and all these like neon color ombres and they're like, I wanna do that. And then they struggle and then they don't know why and they post on the internet and I'm like, oh, you know, because and I asked, you know, how long we've been doing nails? Like, oh, we, I just started a week ago. You should not be doing white and black ombre if you started a week ago. You know, you gotta practice your control of the powder a little bit first before you can do that type of ombre. So it's like a baby pink ombre and I'm, I'm gonna cap this a little bit later. do the same thing on each nail okay position your white your base color in the same spot because that's when you know where to blend your ombre and you'll be able to do it in this will allow me to shape easier later and I always recommend doing the whole nail with the white the base color first so you can have the positioning in the same spot because sometimes if you do the ombre first and one nail at a time you kind of don't know where the white is because the ombre cover it Yes, I'm gonna cap this. Um, I'm not cap it, but I'm gonna protect my ombre with clear later before I start filing, just in case. Um, for a lot of you guys are new too, in case from filing and drilling and stuff like that, you don't wanna over file, over drill too. Is that the same spot? Place to be the same spot. It gives me like a guideline to know where I put my ombre. For those guys that are struggling with putting ombres too low, too high, um, that's one of my nice uh, free, free gem from, from me to you. If you position your white in the same spot, you'll know where to put your, your blend bead and you'll know how much to drag down. Oh my God, take from the register. Jesus. And it's important to make that first bead smooth too. The smoother it is, the easier your ombre is. If their first bead is not smooth, guess what? Um, when you try to ombre that secondary color, it's gonna fill in the crevices and it won't look as smooth, okay? It's very important. So take your time with that. I'm gonna do all the white and I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually replace my monomer. My monomer is getting old. Nowadays, ombre is actually a very, um, it's not even a design anymore. It's almost like a basic. Like before, when color powder first came out, ombre was like, you know, uh, a design, consider a design. Now it's so basic. Um, it's very basic, as in just a basic design. So that everybody should, like, when clients ask for it, it's just almost like assume that you know how to do it. And it's actually not that hard. Um, the only issue you would have if you were struggling with ombre is that powder control. Um, you're not able to get the liquid to powder ratio right. That means they're struggling. Oh my goodness. You don't feel it? Mm -mm. So basically if you can't if you can't get the liquid powder ratio down, you won't be able to pick up that smooth bead and work with it. That's why you get really clumpy ombres.
there's always enough powder, okay? A lot of times you guys say, oh, we don't have enough powder. You just keep putting up more. No, there's always enough. You just gotta put, you just gotta make sure you pull the powder through from the nail. There's always enough powder. Okay. I'm gonna actually refresh this monomer real quick because I want a nice clean monomer for my ombre. This was dirty. I, I thought it was my, my brush, but it was my monomer. I didn't use it for during class. That's why it was a little bit dirty. Check my brush. I got a little acrylic here built up. Gonna get rid of that real quick. I get some fresh monomer. I do my pink and then clear shape and then we're almost done. Generally, it takes me about, if you do ombre, it takes you about, it should take about 30, 40 minutes to do an ombre set. It doesn't matter the length. But it's a very a sim a simple process. That's why I was running into issue with that blend, because I have a piece of acrylic right here. When you have acrylic in your brush, what happens is when you try to blend, the acrylic's gonna try to bond to the, the powder that you're trying to blend, and then it creates streaks. So, that's important also. There you go. So now I do my blend again. Just make sure that you get enough powder that you need and you don't blend it until it's ready. When it's too wet, it will just run through the whole nail. When it's just right, you're about to blend it nice and smooth. Oh my God, there's still stuff in that monomer jar. An elliptical motion, use your brush to blend in. That's one thing I like about print brush, clean out the cuticle area. Once, if you have any harsh lines, you just gotta take your brush and brush it in. Okay, you don't have to brush all the way through, you just brush in that spot. And one problem I see people doing is they try to brush everything through. I'm gonna get rid of this little speck here. The glitter I had for my glass is stuck in the bottom of my jar. So I'll take a little bit more powder here and just put it right here. There you go. A lot of people ask me, oh, I get a lot of issues with my cuticles. Yes, because yes, the bead is too wet. Okay, your bead's too wet. You gotta give it some time, about three seconds to four seconds, six seconds if you have to. Let the bead kind of dry up a little bit before you start, you know. I always nudge my powder up to my cuticle area. I never place it right at the cuticle area. When it's wet, it'll, it'll just make everything all, make everything all uh, bl bleeding on it. So watch, I give my, my powder time. Look, look at it, marble. One, two, three. Okay. See it? It's stable. It's a stable bead. I'll be able to pad up to my cuticle area. I'm not too worried about it flooding. And I'll be able to blend in the nail. Clean your brush in between. I know my ratio and also know how much time I have. See that? The bead is stable. And I just brush it through. And then I just tap my cuticle area lightly. Get that nice flushness all the way up to the cuticle area. Of course the thumb needs a bigger bead. Nudge it up to the cuticle area. 
Look at that. See? No flooding. Now, I only drag about half of this bead down because I only need half of it. If I drag too much all the way from the top, I'll get the powder all the way through my nail. I don't want that. Let me get my blend the way I want it. Okay, now I'm done with that acrylic. I'm gonna take out a clear. And I'm gonna cap just my ombre, just make sure I protect it. And keep the using clear. If you guys ever use clear and you have bubbling issues, it's because your monomer is contaminated. Just be careful. So now it's just gonna be, this amount of clear is all I need. And I generally place the clear around the apex area. Give myself more structure if I need it. Also, it protects my blend. And just remember, the amount of clear you put on is, you know, based on the amount of, you can drill off. If you're gonna drill, or go crazy and drill and file and stuff like that, yes, your clear is gonna, you know, be taken off. And it'll be counterproductive, let's see. I don't cap the whole nail, really. Kind of nudge it up, make sure I get a nice slope effect. And clear is always gonna be the most runny, runny powder that you're gonna run, walk into. That's why I, I, whenever I don't have to clear, I won't use it. <laughs> if I don't have to. But ombre is, I, I cap. I don't cap color powder. Most of the color powders I use are um, core powders. They don't need capping. Um, if you're using a powder that needs capping, you have to cap, then you gotta do it. But I feel like it's very counterproductive and it takes me a lot longer if I had to go through with the whole color the whole, the whole application process twice just because I have to cap with clear. And that's probably mainly why a lot of you guys are taking a little longer doing sets. Because you're doing the application process twice. And find yourself a product that you don't really need to cap with. So I like using clear with fresh monomer, so I don't have any contaminant in it. It might cause bubbling or cloudiness. Just very lightly, just gonna bring the clear over. <laughs> What's going on in the live stream? Oh my goodness, guys, come on. Just enjoy the nails. You want to do nails, you want to watch your nails, do nails your own way, you can do your own live stream. <laughs> What's dirty? The, uh, the brush? Oh uh, yeah, this is acrylic on this brush for sure. I gotta soak it. I haven't even looked at the comments. You guys are already going crazy in there. Whitney, if you can't enjoy the video, you can always leave, hon. No one's forcing you to be here, sweetie. <laughs> but if you like people to hear your opinions, you can definitely start your own and you can definitely do your, do your own thing, you know? It's Friday. You don't want to start your weekend off like that. You really want to start your Friday off like that, Whitney? So, I always tap my um my powder upward because I don't want a bulge right here. Just tap it and bring it down. It saves me a lot of work later. The transition. It's okay, guys. Not everybody is wakes up on the 
not everybody having a good Friday. You never, you don't know what she's going through. Just let it be. Move on. Out of 100 people, if one person is unsatisfied, I think that's a good ratio. I'm, I have a 99%. Okay, so I definitely gotta clean my brush. I have a little bit of acrylic right here, you can tell. But since it's been in the monomer this whole time, it's very soft. Let's so make sure I get this out before I store my brush so I don't have that issue again. So it was actually what, one of the issues I had here. I had a piece of acrylic in here from way before I left for class. There you go. I'm just looking for a clean cup. Oh, there's a lot at Walmart. <laughs> yeah, this is what I use for my class. I just got back, so yeah, it's a little bit dirty. I had to use glitter and stuff in there. There you go. You happy? <laughs> Welcome to the internet. People want things their way at other people's expense. <clears throat> I'm gonna use 100, 100 grit. I always score my fresh files first. So all my shapes ready here. I'm just gonna quickly just redefine the shape a little bit and bring it in. Clean up underneath. Get some crisp shape. A lot of times when you do the acrylic and you shape with the brush, it actually takes you le very less time to shape. There you go. Generally, I spend about maybe five to 10 minutes just shaping for both hands. I try not to shape too much because the more you shape, the actually the more you remove, the worse your shape will get. So you guys gotta remember like, you know, when you're shaping, you're actually removing. So spending longer shaping sometimes can be very counterproductive. You gotta know when to stop and take a look at it and say, okay, you know, I can't, I can't shape no more or else my shape's gonna change. That's very important. I think over, over shaping, over filing is definitely an issue nowadays. Alright, enough guys. Don't go back and forth with her. You know that's what she wants. <laughs> fact is she's still here giving me that view which You can always shape and always come back later, okay? If you say after you're done got filing and drilling and you wanna crisp up shape more and do it more. Don't spend too much time doing it here. I find that with a lot of my students, they spend a lot of time shaping um, unnecessarily and they kind of cut into their time, their set. Um, probably save five, 10 minutes. And that's a, that's a lot, you know, five, 10 minutes per client a day. You can fit in a whole new client, a, a whole another client that during that day. So cut down on your, your time management a little bit. The hand like this. And I'm generally happy with this. Um, I'll go back through and finish it up later after I'm done hand filing. But generally, this is the shape I'm looking for. Just nice, crisp corners, you know, straight sides. And I'm good with that. Yep, this is the 100-100 grit, but they're, they're not like, they're not, they're a little bit different from other filers, to be honest with you. They say they know that this is a regular client because of your tattoos. You're a dead giveaway. <laughs> Dead giveaway. Um, yes, Alan, if, you, if your room is cold, your client's feeling cold, yes, your acrylic is gonna be running. Um, I always tell everybody that the ideal temperature to work in is 71 to 73. If you're under 70, your powder is gonna be runny. It doesn't matter what kind of monomer you're using and what kind of powder you're using. If you're over 74, 75, you already know the difference in your powder is gonna be more dry. It's gonna dry faster, it's gonna get sticky quicker. 
So a lot of you guys um, that are working at home, I recommend setting uh, a deal 71 to 73 is like the ideal room temperature to work with any acrylic. Um, the temperature is definitely a very big variable when it comes to acrylics drying faster or slower um, and also how you work. So make sure we, we set that there because I think most houses are either 75 or if, <laughs> if you're if your man's one of those type that sets the thermometer at like 70, uh, 60, 66. I honestly, I'd rather you do your ratios less. I'd rather you fix your ratios and add acetone to your monomer. I know that adding acetone to your monomer does accelerate the drying speed and it does work, but it just, you know, as a nail tech, I think it's better to be able to adjust my ratio. If my room's cold, I'm gonna get less monomer. I'm gonna pick up more powder. So I know that it's gonna be more runny. So I'll change my ratio for more powder than monomer. Um, that would actually help it a little bit better than having to add acetone every time. Now, because once the acetone's in there, it changes the consistency of the monomer already. You cannot use that monomer again, which generally you're, you're supposed to dispose of it anyways. But um, as I said, I think as a nail tech, to be able to, be able to control the, the product is a good skill to have, good skill to develop, to understand what's going on. My application is perfect, but the room was cold and it ran on one side. Yep. You'll know. Yep. Temperature is a big, big variable. So the colder it is, the more runny it is. Uh, the hotter it is, the more it's going to dry. You start getting that sticky monomer right away. You know? So now we're going to have to just put the plant finger forward and just kind of get nice and crisp. And I'm very happy with that. Get those edges nice and crisp. There we go. Can't complain with the shape. You're welcome, Alan. So now I'm just gonna hand file. This a, you can use a drill for this too. I like hand filing a little be bit better because um, you kind of get the whole base of the thing and you really get the whole transition. But don't stay in one spot because remember, we want curvature to our nail. So if you stay in one spot, it's going to eat to the curvature. I kind of just rotate my hand as I'm filing up and down motion. This gives me a smooth surface. Um, any uneven surfaces will be filed. You'll see like it'll be like light, lighter or smoother in certain areas. Using a drill works too, but let's see, the drill is not going to be this this long. This it will kind of speed up my process. Later, all I got to do is really buff and um, do cuticle work and buff, and I'm good to go with the top coat. This is a hundred by one hundred. Um, but to be clear, this is a little bit more coarse than what you'll get in nail supply stores. So I remember I ran out of these these files and my store was out of stock and I couldn't get any either. And I had to go buy for my salon and for myself. And it wasn't the same. It was just really smooth, but it says 100 by 100. And it didn't feel the same to me. But this is definitely a little bit different than what you can get 100 by 100 out there. I think it's like 100 by 100 coarse. They have 100 by 100 fines. Um, don't, uh, I don't know, don't correct me. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's I feel like that's what it is. And a lot of the nail supply stores don't sell the 100 by 100 coarse for some reason. So I was really struggling during that time, but now that I'm back in stock. So what I'm doing is I'm evening out the base of the nail. Yes, this, is, this seems like a lot of work, but it isn't. Because once you get used to it, hand filing is definitely your best friend. You're able to get stuff done a lot quicker. Instead of using a drill and trying to drill, 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 you might have uneven surfaces because you can't control the drill. And this gives you a little bit more control and a little more surface area. Is there a chance that you could show uh, how to season file? Oh yeah. You take two files and you just go like this. Get the edges. Cause uh, the edges are what you, you would usually cut your client with. Like you go like this, you'll cut the client. Cause it's, when these files are fresh, they're very, very sharp. So that's how I season my files. I just get the edges. I rub two against each other. And you're not gonna dull out too much. You're just gonna get rid of that really harsh uh, edges that's gonna possibly cut the client. 
most likely if you don't season a new file, especially 8080s, there's a lot of grittier. So yeah, if you're using 8080, definitely, definitely, for sure. Season those files. That's not a good feeling to cut the client right here with the file. Oof. You're welcome. You need thicker gloves. <laughs> Honestly, I can't work with thicker gloves because, you know, it feels weird. And this is really, really, very quick. Just go through. And you'll know when it's all smooth because everything will be nice and matted. If you see a shiny spot, you know that's uneven. And then you just go through and just run it through a little bit longer and then it'll balance it out. There you go. You see the difference? Well, not really. I need one of those thimbles on my thumb so I don't drip. I should get one of those. My students told me that. It's like, every time I watch you live, your thumb always gets messed up. So after this, I'll just go do some cuticle work and clean up underneath, and I'll be finished with the set. And I just gotta put nice, non-cleansed top coat on top, and we're good to go. Man, I love this shape. It's so in right now. This would be so good for like sweater nails, plaid nails. Next time. Always check your side view underneath. I'm about finished here. These files actually last you a long time. I don't like the really uh, smooth ones because it actually wears out really fast. And you, you're really rubbing it against nothing at, at some point. You gotta be careful. Remember, we did the clear cap for the, the ombre. Um, if we don't, we gotta be careful not to go in too much. Because if we go too much, we're eating on to our ombre, okay? So that's why, that's another reason why I like hand filing. Because with a drill bit, a metal drill bit, you might put too much pressure and it might eat into that acrylic. Oh, when you mess up the ombre, you want to cry. I would cry if I mess up my ombre during the filing process. And there we go, we're about finished and I'm gonna take my drill bit out and do my cuticle work. I think that's what everybody wants to see, right? The cuticle work. I know, I know. I will be using a sharp bit. It's gonna be my fine five and one sharp bit. This is a custom bit that I have. You can find all my stuff on the nail-shop.com. Um, it's sharp, so the edge is very sharp, but it's, this one's been used for a while, so it's very seasoned. So I won't have that big any big of issue, but the reason why I like using sharp bits, I'll be able to go into the cuticle area very nice and smooth right between the cuticles. And this is where your lifting happens, guys. For like guys that have issues lifting, um, this is where it's at, okay? Once you flush this to the, the nail, you won't have any if, li lifting issues. Um, even if you don't forget primer, even if, as long as you prep good, you do good cuticle work, um, you won't have any lifting. For those of you guys that are looking for those nice, clean cuticles you see on those Instagram nails, um, it's just using the proper tool and being able to go into there and get that nice flushness, okay? 
And no, I won't give her that ring of fire because I know I kind of know exactly where to hold back. And so I'm just blending out this portion right here. I really don't have to worry about this because I already smoothed out with a hand filer. So I'm just blending out these corners, make sure it's nice and smooth transition. There's no bulge. As you can see, the cuticle area is getting nice and flush. I'm not going to try to stay there too long because I don't want to overfile either because I don't want to make it too thin there. There we go. Do the cuticles first this way easier? I do cuticles first this way. This way. They're easier to get the acrylic back fat enough. Um, you don't want the acrylic in the back to be fat, to be honest with you. I like, remember the, the acrylic has to, the acrylic has to kind of fan out, as in uh, slope out from the cuticle area. We don't you want any bulges right here. The only bulge you have is where the apex is, and you slightly blend outward to it. Key is angling your drill bit to make sure it gets nice and clean into these cuticle area. Yes, this is it, guys. You want you want to be on team no lift, team nails last for months. This is it, the cuticle work. Yes, primer. Yes, all that product you buy is gonna help, but it ain't gonna help if you can't do this process. Oh, sorry. No matter how good the product is, it will lift if you don't seal the cuticles. Okay. Even with painting with gel, I'm trying not to be heavy-handed. Yep, <laughs> heavy-handed is probably one of the biggest issues, one of the biggest things that um, nail techs run into. I feel ya. I mean, gotta really ease up on it. The more, more heavy-handed you are, the more work you're gonna create for yourself. I feel like even that's that's the case with, uh, you know, laying acrylic also. Nice blend. See that? Here goes all the way up there. One of the reasons, this is a fine, but my medium works just as fine. As well, um, this bit is customized. I had it cut specifically this way. It's more of a smooth and remove. Um, a lot of bits are like very gritty and they actually eat up chunks of the acrylic. And you gotta be really careful with that. So a lot of you guys are maybe still um, working on uh, getting your handling of the drill. If you accidentally use one of those bits and you actually put too much pressure, it just removes so much acrylic that maybe it's too late for you. I could cry. I can't find my 5-1 bit. I need to order another one. Ah, Desiree, why? Yeah, you won't be able to find this exact bit anywhere because I had actually had to customize uh, the way it's cut, the way everything is made. The size, the weight, the quality. It's probably one of my favorite things that my students buy for me is the bits. At least it will last you a while, years. I've used this one bit right here for almost a year now. Since I first launched it. As long as you take care of it, you're good to go. This is not a safety bit. This is sharp. I never use safety bits. I always use sharp bits. I do have these in safety. For a lot of you guys that want to practice first, there's a safety version that is actually still pretty sharp. And you'll be able to, uh, you know, just get the hang of going around the cuticle area. I know it's scary. I know, yes, you could probably cut your clients before. Guess what? No one in this history of nails have done nails that have never cut a client with a cuticle bit before, okay? It's normal. It's part of your grow it's part of your growing phase, unfortunately. You know, just sanitize your tools, clean up, you know, sanitize the, the wound, get that magic green liquid you get off Amazon for very cheap. Apply it on there and you're good to go. that and because earlier I flushed my acrylic so well up there that there's a lot less work for me there's not a lot of acrylic there for me to drill into I just go through and work it I 
lot of people leave a lot of bulk here. You can't. You gotta actually smooth that out, transition it out, slope it out. Okay. Tilt your tilt your drill bit a little bit. I go in circular motion. If you're right-handed, you're going forward. If you're left-handed, you go reverse. Okay. A lot. <laughs> you, you think that sounds like uh, it makes sense? Do you think that's self-explanatory? There's actually students I've seen that are right-handed using it in reverse, and they wonder why they can't. You know, get move the acrylic because if, you, if you're right-handed and you use it in reverse, guess what? You're just going the opposite direction of the grit, and it, <laughs> that doesn't do anything. It just actually just rubs it. Yes, it may seem like you're removing a product, but you're actually not doing anything. So just remember, right-handed is for forward. This machine has a, a switch forward, left-handed reverse. Okay. A lot of nail techs come in this industry; they probably don't even know there's an option for that on the machine. So if you have issues with getting, you know, grinding or having this working well, you have to feel some kind of friction. And yes, a lot of you guys. Sometimes you run the issues where you're removing too much product by the cuticle area and it looks like then you have fill. That happens. I mean, that's why I use a sharp bit because I have a, a very sharp edge I can just put right in between there. If you have a very big like ball-like cane bird um, safety bit and you drill too much here, you're gonna remove too much, okay? So then it, it looks like they need a fill. Just ease up on it a little bit. See that? That's all you need. Back shape. Perfect. When you have another class in Tampa, Orlando area, um, my Orlando class actually had two seats freed up because um, they couldn't make it because uh, the mom had to go work out of town for a week uh, out of nowhere. I mean, just you have to be repositioned to work out of town for a week. So I don't know if you still want a spot in Orlando class. It's going to be this week, though, Thursday, Friday, in a few days. This week coming up. Just DM me. Charleston class is probably gonna be full up soon. I still have Kansas City open for January. Um, pretty much uh, December, I'm only doing one class. It's gonna be in uh, North Carolina. That's already filled. And after that, I'm gonna take a break until the next year. Spend some time during Christmas with the, the fam. I've been traveling a lot. I mean, like this month, I did three classes this month. Actually, one of my favorite things to do is actually cuticle work. This is something satisfying about cuticle work. Once you master it, it's very satisfying. So generally, guys, about like this, slope out, and we're about finished. I'm just gonna clean up underneath the nail, any excess that I have. And over, overfill, you can use a sanding band for this. If you don't have control of your drill, I don't recommend using a drill bit, but I don't have that much. Let's get rid of any excess powder that's underneath. to the powder that gets stuck underneath. So, for a lot of you guys that want to go back through and just like, you know, clean up your shape a little bit, now's the time. Earlier, if you did, just crisp up a little bit, why not? Before we buff. Earlier I could have done this, but you know, we changed the thickness, so 
rule of thumb, whenever thickness change, shape changes slightly. minor details that, that matter guys and there we go finish with the set